Alrighty. So let's go ahead and finish our observable socket. And then let's inspect the WebSocket connection to see exactly what's going on. So in our observable socket, we now have this emit action, which is going to send an action to the server. And it's going to expect a callback from the server um, with an ID to map it to a specific ID. And that's how we resolve it. So how do we do that on on action? Well, this code is going to be kind of fun. Let's first look at how we use on action again. So I'm going to go to server, server.js. We do on action, and on action, we can return either an observable, which could represent an asynchronous operation, or if we return a synchronous operation, we could just return the data right there. So user is creds.username. And this will be passed back into Socket.io, sent over the wire with the proper request ID, and then executed on the client. So what do we need to do on the on action? Well, first of all, we need our callback back, callback back. Um, and then we delete our debugging code because we no longer need that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this socket on action ID or sorry, arg and then ID. Remember, our emit action sends two parameters, the argument that was passed from the client and then the ID of the request. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a try catch. Because let's say an exception was thrown on the server. We want to be able to tell the client that an exception happened on the server because otherwise the client's going to get no acknowledgement that anything happened. So how are we going to do this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a helper function. And it's going to be called emit error. And it's going to take in an event, an ID, and an error. Now we have an interesting thing. Let's say that... Um, uh, let's talk about error handling for a second. Let's say in my server, remember this is our server code. Let's say in the login, I threw a new error and the error had, let's say, secure information in this, don't let the client know. So let's say I threw that error. Well, that's gonna be a problem because errors can contain secure information about your server. You never wanna send the error the stack trace. But sometimes you do wanna throw an exception that can be read by the client. Because let's say instead of this secure information, don't let the client know, which would be most errors, let's say instead we wanted to say, throw new error, user not found. We want that information to be sent to the user. So basically, we have two cases. All errors, we don't want to send information back to the user, but some errors we do. How do we, how do we delineate that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up to the top of this observable socket, and I'm going to export a function. I'm going to say export function client message, which will take in a message. And this is going to say const error equals new error of message. And then it's going to say error dot client message equals message. And it's going to return error. So now what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to throw client message user not logged in. And what this client message is going to do is it's going to create instantiate a new error. This is important. If we don't throw a new error, we're not going to get a stack trace for the exception. We need a stack trace for the exception. So that's why we create an actual error object. But then we add a special property to it, client message. And the client message property is going to be picked up by our code. And it's going to be picked up and say, hey, if there's a client message in this error object, then we're going to send that failure message back to the client. Otherwise, we're just going to send a generic, there was a fatal error, so that we don't risk leaking information about the internals of our server. So now with that in mind, let's scroll down back here and finish our emit error, which I'm kind of implementing this a little bit lopsidedly. I hope you forgive me for that. But the uh, emit error is pretty straightforward. It's simply const message equals error and error.client message or fatal, that's not how you spell fatal, fatal error. And then I'm going to say this socket emit event, which event should be action. I've been using the term action, so I should stay consistent with that. Action fail followed by the message followed by the ID. So what we're doing here is we're, if the error is an object, 
and the error has a client message, then return the client message. I'm abusing JavaScript um, uh, logical ors and ands here, but if you recall, JavaScript logical ands and ors don't return true or, fa or false. They return the final thing to be ran. So in this case, error and client message will return client message if it exists. But I have this or in here that says, if error is null or error client message is null, then do fatal error. And then we emit back to the client, hey, this action failed, this was the message, and this is the ID. Now it's important to wrap this in an object. And that's because I want the error objects to potentially display have more information than just a simple message. But uh, that's what we're doing there. So now we can write our catch block. Our catch block is simply going to be if ID, this emit error, and we're gonna pass in action ID error, and then console error, error stack or error. So this is a, kind of a funny bit of code here. We're saying if ID, so if this action was invoked and the and the, the infrastructure passed in an ID, so we know that this was coming from our emit action event. To make this a little bit more clear, maybe I can rename this to request ID. So that's the request ID that's sent from the client. So if the request ID exists, then invoke our emit error function, which will figure out if we need to display a custom error or just a generic fatal error. Then otherwise, emit error.stack or error. And stack is going to be the stack trace of an exception. And that's what we want to be able to see in our console window when something fails. Otherwise, just emit the error. So if this gets invoked, if error.stack is undefined or null, then we're just going to display the error. That means an exception wasn't actually thrown. Someone just decided to throw a raw object or something, which is perfectly valid in JavaScript. You can say throw bleh if you want to. But if you throw bleh, the error that's caught is not going to have a stack trace. So that's why we have to put that or guard in there. But if we threw a new error, then it'll have a stack trace and it'll tell us where the error happened. All right, now we have our catch. Now let's do our try. This is going to be fun. First thing, const value equals callback. Then I'm going to say, let's see, how do we want to do this? We're going to say, if not value, then we're going to say this socket emit action null ID return or request ID. So if there was no value returned by the callback, like let's say our login didn't have any side effects, right? It didn't return any data back. We still have to tell the client that the request completed. Otherwise the client's going to be sitting there on its observable thingy and it's not going to be notified that the thing was completed. So if not value, we just emit null back as the arguments, but we make sure to pass in our request ID so the client knows which, which thing to resolve. Then I'm going to say if not value or if not value dot subscribe. So if the value is not an observable sequence, let's say like in this example, we return the user, but it's not an observable sequence. Let's delete that code so ESLint shuts up. So in this case, we have a synchronous method that does not do an asynchronous result. So we can immediately send back the value. We know if it's an observable sequence, if it has a dot subscribe method on it. We could actually make this a little bit better. If value subscribe or if type of value subscribe does not equal equal function. So that's even better there. We're saying if the thing that was returned does not have a subscribe function, then we're simply going to say this socket emit action value request ID. All right, now for the fun bit of code. What we have to do now is on line 111, we now know that they returned an observable sequence. An observable sequence that might not have a value yet. It might be waiting on a, um, a HTTP request. It might be waiting on the file system. It might be waiting on anything. And so what we have to do now is we have to subscribe to that observable sequence that was passed back. So I'm going to do uh, a little bit of sanity checking here. I'm going to say let has value equals false. 
Then I'm going to say value.subscribe. And I'm going to implement this kind of funny. I'm going to do subscribe and I'm going to do next um, item. Or actually, th this is important. I'll explain why in a second. Next item. Um, error. Error. And then complete. Complete. Okay. It is very important that in this particular scenario, you use the arrow function syntax. Otherwise, you won't be able to access this dot socket. So if I just did next item without the arrow syntax, the this right here would be different from the this out here, and we wouldn't have access to underscore socket. In fact, even Visual Studio Code is telling me that. I still get that autocomplete, but it's but it's not like known for certain. But if I do this dot socket, well, same difference, but I have at least the uh, the is connected, whereas up here, I don't have the is connected. So use the arrow functions here, otherwise you won't be able to access this dot socket. If you're a little bit iffy about um, the arrow function syntax and what exactly it means and the different ways to define an object with functions on them, check out the using modern JavaScript today. I, I go over all of the um, ES2015 features or rather the most prominent ones. All right, so next, I'm just gonna write, the, let the code speak for itself. I'm just gonna write the code. I think it might be kind of clear what I'm doing here. If has value, throw new error, action, action, produced more than one value. Otherwise, this socket emit action item request ID followed by has value equals true. Now for error, I'm going to say this emit error action request ID error and then console error error.stack or error. And then on complete, I'm going to say if not has value, this socket emit action null request ID. So what am I doing here? So again, observables have three callbacks. They have the next, the error, and the complete. That's different from uh, promises. Promises only have two callbacks, reject and resolve. Now that's because observable sequences can pass down more than one item. But we don't want that behavior here. We only ever want to have one item returned. And if multiple items are returned by the sequence that's been uh, returned by our callback, we consider that an error. So we keep track of whether or not we've received a value. And when we do receive a value, we tell the client about it. And then we set that flag that we've had the value. If we receive an error, then we emit that error and we log it out to the console. And then when we hit complete, we check to see if we don't have a value. And if we don't, then we emit back to the client and tell, hey, uh, tell the client, hey, you know, the server completed its thing, but it didn't return any data. So here, have a null instead. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this real fast and then I'll walk through this one more time. And I'll show you guys, well, I'll also show you guys what, how it works on the, um, on the WebSocket. So don't worry, I'll, I'll go over this code just one more time here in a sec. But for now, I want to pop open the application and the server. So right now we have server.emit action login with this data. And then we subscribe to the result. We check to see uh, if it has an error or not. And if it does, we log it out. Otherwise, we logged in. This actually won't be necessarily how things are set up at the moment. Um, the reason I say that is the way we would actually, the way that the uh, would actually work is we would add an error callback here and say console error error. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So right now we have a basic synchronous uh, result here on action login. We simply return that data back to the user. So let's refresh and see what data we get. HMR connected, and we probably got an exception over here. And we totally did. Cannot read username of undefined. So what went on there? Uh, creds was undefined, but we did pass in credentials. So it looks like we have a bug, and that was probably my fault. Well, I mean, it was my fault. 
Um, because I, I forgot to pass the argument to callback. Whoops. Remember, callback is the thing on the server that's handling our, our stuff. We need to make sure to pass an arg in there. So make sure to fix that in line 101. Let's come back here and refresh. Uh, it's going to take a sec because it has to rebuild the stuff. We're logged in, object, object. There you go. That simple um, thing worked. But value.subscribe is not a function, probably because I forgot to return after this. Another small mistake. I apologize. That's why I wanted to test this before going over the code again. Um, so make sure that you pass in return there. So now let's refresh. We should get we, we are logged in. And there you go. Now let's make a asynchronous operation on the server. So let's come up to the server.js. Let's say it takes a couple seconds to log in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say return observable dot... Let's just make this easy. Observable of user and then dot delay three seconds. Or how about user, and then we use the creds, so uh, ESLint shuts up. Uh, user creds dot username. All right. So that is our thing. But we add the delay. So this item won't be published until three seconds are up. So let's refresh. And we get HMR connected. We wait three seconds. And then we are logged in. So now our server is capable of sending in those asynchronous operations. Now let's test one more thing. Let's throw. Let's say throw new air whoa. Save that out. Come back here, hit refresh. We should get a fatal error. HMR connected. And then, okay, we did not get a fatal error. Uh, but we did get the stack trace on this. On line 101, we got a stack trace. So that's good. Uh, let's inspect our WebSocket and see if that error was sent, and it was not sent. So the error was never emitted back to us. So that's the problem there. So now that we know the problem, let's go ahead and fix it. Um, if we catch, if request ID, which we have, emit error request ID, and then socket emit action fail, Uh, let's go ahead and just say console. Actually, I think what's going on there is we are getting that fail back, but we didn't bind to this properly. Arg ID console log dot failed. It's just a quick little debugging thing. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, give it a sec to rebuild our client stuff. Uh, open up our console. And we did not get that back. So now, the next thing to do is to see if... The next thing to do is to see if emit error is being called. So console log emit action. Refresh. Server is reconnected. Well, that's interesting. Oh, <laughs> I know what's wrong. I know exactly what's wrong. This is kind of silly. This was me doing something dumb. If request ID. Now think about that for a sec. What will that code do? If request ID. What if request ID is zero? In JavaScript, zero will result in an if check failing. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna say if type of request ID does not equal equal undefined, which is the proper way to write that code, but sometimes I'm a little lazy. So that is a lesson of why you should always check to see if something's not undefined and not just use if blah, unless you're absolutely certain zero will never enter into the equation. All right, now that the code should work, we get our fatal error. And with that, that's our observable socket and stuff and things. If we take a look at it real fast, I will scroll through the code one more time. 
if you want to take a look at any of this logic. So again, it's really just an awesome framework for doing synchronous or asynchronous requests to the server. Well, not synchronous to the server, I mean, but allowing the server to perform either a action that returns a value or an error or an observable sequence itself. So the server can go do an asynchronous operation. But we will see use cases of this throughout this course. This is the backbone of how a lot of our services are gonna work. So uh, I hope this wasn't too intense, but I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.